Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today, we're going to answer a question from Barry Rosenblum, KC1OPK, and uh, try and clear up some uh, misconceptions that may have uh, crept in here. Uh, I have said often that uh, ground connections, that is ground connections, should not be uh, soldered, but they should be crimped um, or uh, bolted or something like that. So for example, on my ground bar in the back of the uh, station here, it's a copper pipe about that long. I have the, the wire that goes down to the grounding rod is held on with a hose clamp rather than soldered or anything. And the same down at the grounding rod is connected with a crimp connection rather than a soldered connection. And all of the lightning arresters are connected with crimp connections on there too. So let's read what he has to say. Uh, because the actual cable connections are usually either soldered or crimped. And they're equivalent. Uh, I have had um, iffy results with crimped cables. Um, some have worked very well. Others seem to work their way apart. Um, so I'm not going to recommend that you crimp, although I've got crimp connectors and it's the only way I know of, of crimping a, or putting a connector on RG213. Because um, I'm just too clumsy to do it the solder method. Uh, for RG8X, I usually will uh, uh, crimp for uh, the um, LMR400. I will also uh, crimp because I've got some special connectors from Times Microwave that are made just for that one single application. So let's see what he's got. Hi, Dave. Thanks. Glad to show you my appreciation for your support in setting up my very first radio at 73 years young. Today, I watched your grounding videos a couple times. It's Ask Dave number eight uh, and wanted to get the correct parts. So I would really appreciate obtaining some helping answers. Uh, number one, in connecting the antenna coax RG8U from the ballon, should I use a crimp connector and on the other end of that feed line into the lightning arrestor, I should be use a crimping PL259. It doesn't matter. Um, there is obviously current that will be carried in it uh, in the event of a lightning strike, but anything that would uh, be more direct that you really want your ground wire for, you're gonna overwhelm that coax anyway. I had a, a direct strike to a lightning uh, to a 20 meter dipole and it completely vaporized the dipole and ruined the coax uh, because of a high voltage point uh, further down. Um, are these the only two locations where a crimping connector is essential? Uh, you don't need to crimp a, ca a cable for grounding purposes. Or do I need to use a crimp connector on the other feed going from that arrestor in the continuing feed into your house? No, it can be either way. Or can I use a soldered connector on that output? Yes, you can, if you want to. Um, soldering connectors is a little hard because the way they're designed, it's hard to get the connector hot enough to allow solder to flow in and amongst the braid. Um, and uh, <laughs> I will admit that I've had some really iffy connectors over the years. The crimp connector gives you a better connection initially, but with corrosion and things like that, it might go bad after a few years. A soldered connector is a pain to do, but uh, does result in a connector that should last a lifetime if it's done right. Okay. Um, 
And in connecting the inside of the house antenna feed to the radio, can that be a soldered connection? Yes, yes, absolutely can. I was talking to one of the guys at DX Engineering, I think, when I asked this, and they said my internal equipment bus equipment ground should be run to my house ground, which from the panel to the cold water pipe where there is a ground clamp and all of this to two bonded grounding rods outside. <laughs> Let me talk a little bit about that. There are very few homes anymore that have copper water pipes running out of the house all the way to the city supply. Uh, most of that these days is plastic, and by that I mean homes constructed within the last 30 or 40 years. A long time. Uh, copper in uh, the ground does corrode uh, with time. Uh, for years, uh, back when I was a kid, they would talk about ground, to the, uh, ground your equipment to the cold water pipe. Well, of course, that, that doesn't work anymore because it becomes plastic. And my house happens to have copper internal plumbing and then plastic to the street. And nowadays, they don't use copper at all. It's all plastic piping. And uh, it, uh, maybe tubing would be a better word. Uh, and so there's no copper involved at all. What you should do is put in a ground rod right outside your shack, as close as to your shack as you can get it, and take that and ground that to your uh, internal shack ground, which for me is a copper pipe just inches from where I am right now. And uh, then bond that ground to the utility ground outside the house using number six bare stranded wire. It has seven strands and you can get it from Home Depot. It's um, at number, number six wire, it's not all that cheap. You don't use number two. I happen to have number two because that's what I had. But uh, I would say uh, number six is, I believe, what's called for uh, by the Motorola documents and by the NEC, uh, National Electric Code. Okay, so, and he says, two bonded grounding rods outside. Well, one of them is the one right outside your shack, and the other one, in my case, is along this wall and over in the other corner where the utility ground rod is, and they are bonded. Um, you don't need two grounding rods right outside your shack. Uh, one will be fine in almost all cases. There are some cases where you live in a very dry climate like Arizona or New Mexico and um, in that case you look into things. You, your house may already have an oofer ground that you can use. Uh, that's something you can look at, U-F-E-R, ground. And look that up on Wikipedia. There's actually an entry for that. And, uh, or you, if you can't dig very deep, you can dig a hole, you know, foot deep maybe, and lay the ground rod sideways and fill that in. There is uh, ground rod um, filler material that you can get, that, uh, ground rod enhancement material that you can put in there too. There's all kinds of things you can do in marginal cases, but you do need a ground. So I ordered a 10 foot braid to connect to that connector and now I think that I really need a different wire. I think you said number two insulated grounding wire. That happens to be what I have, but that is not required. I used what I had on hand, okay, which would go to the outside new station rod. You want to go from your station single point ground with a single braid or copper strap or number six stranded wire down there. I'd recommend the copper strap or the braid, both of which you can get from DX Engineering. It doesn't have to be anything exotic. You're trying to equalize voltages throughout there. And of course, that one from your, your station or shack single point ground, everything should be uh, using a crimp connector like a hose clamp or something uh, down to the ground. All of that should be crimped because that's your primary uh, ground connection. Okay, so I, I hope that helps clarify things a little. Go take a look at my Ask Day video number eight. It should help clarify things. Also, there is a book by the ARRL 
called uh, Grounding and Bonding, uh, which has a very good summary of the kinds of things that you do. And it is not just general type stuff, but quite prescriptive in what you need to do. So I hope that helps. There you have it. Until we next meet, 73.